Oh, hello. I'm Suzanne. I'm a horticulturist at Rogers Gardens, and I'd like to welcome you to our weekly Facebook and Instagram Live on Friday afternoons. Uh, here at Rogers Gardens, we are experts in gardening, and we like to help you succeed. You're going to feel a lot better about it. Today's uh, topic is plumerias. Uh, plumerias are one of those plants that so many people love, and every week I feel like I get so many questions about plumerias, and they're really just pretty easy. I guess if you live in Southern California, they're very, very easy. They're a plant that almost thrives on neglect, but if you give them a little bit of care, they're going to reward you with these big, beautiful flowers. Um, a little bit about plumerias. They are originally from Mexico, coastal, uh, Central America, Brazil, and the Caribbean. A lot of people think that they're from Hawaii or Polynesia or something, but actually um, they've naturalized there, but they're from uh, Mexico and Central America. Uh, there are two kinds of um, plumerias that we see here. We see the rubra and the obtusa. Uh, obtusa is an evergreen. Um, sometimes you'll you'll know them from their super round leaves, but right here we have only the rubra, which have the more pointed leaves. Uh, the rubra also are the ones that go dormant, so um, just keep that in mind around November, December, when they start losing their leaves. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just going dormant. Um, plumerias, they really, really enjoy well-draining soil. That's why they do well in Hawaii, because they have that volcanic soil that just, you know, stays away from the roots of the plant. When you get a uh, plumeria, you want to just put it in some beautiful well-draining soil. Potting soil is good. You'll see the soil here has a lot of pumice in it. That's going to help with drainage, but you can also buy a bag of this beautiful cactus mix going to put it in the ground you can just mix the cactus mix with your natural soil or if you're going to put it in a pot mix it with your potting soil when you're um when you're ready to water your plumeria this is a big question with people plumerias don't need a lot of water they just like regular water they like it going past their roots and they like to just um kind of touch the water a bit. They like the soil to almost dry out between waterings, but not completely. And um, they do not like being overwatered. That could mean that they'll rot and um, it's gonna start right here and you'll see it kind of shrivel up and you'll know it's been overwatered. There's not a lot you can do. It's basically that you've attacked their vascular system um, and you can maybe start again. And speaking of starting again, if you have a friend who has a have one, you can ask them really nicely, can I have a cutting? And um, how it's going to grow to a certain extent, but a cutting from a tree can be as small as this, even smaller. You're going to let it dry out for a couple of days, let the end just dry off, and then you can pretty much just stick it in soil. Some people will use like a rooting hormone or something, but I've grown enough plumerias you can just stick them in soil, make sure that they're kind of evenly moist and they will grow for such a long time. They get very big and um, that's, I feel like I have a question over there. What is my question? We have one question here on Instagram from MX Torres is asking transplanting from a seven gallon to a 15 gallon and uh, potential shock. Gosh, um, if you're doing it right now, maybe. It's not the best time. Usually kind of late, late, late fall or early, early spring, you know, as it's going dormant or as before it's actually come out of dormancy is the best time to transplant it. Um, they're not gonna be too shocky. Just keep that soil um, water level the same and it might not be too bad, but if it hasn't bloomed yet, it might. You know, the roots are gonna be uh, disturbed and they might be a little bit unhappy for a while, but I doubt that you'll kill it. It's pretty hard. They're like a succulent, really um, resilient. Great, we have another question on Facebook by M Martha Treadway. My plants get leaves, but no flowers. How do I encourage them to bloom? Ah, okay, that was uh, my next point actually is fertilizing. So um, plumerias will bloom on their own and they're really happy to do it. Um, the thing that you wanna do is not baby them. They love sun, they love heat. Do not think that you can give them too much sun. 
that's what they need. A lot of times people will keep them in shadier areas, kind of like we have them here right now, but that's just for this live thing. Um, they love sun. The more sun you have, the better they'll bloom. But what you can do is you wanna start fertilizing them in March. As they're coming out of dormancy, there are two, two kind of ways that you can do this. We have an all-purpose fertilizer. This one's a little bit stronger than our just natural down-to-earth organic. This is gonna push them a little bit. That's okay with plumerias. They're great with that. You're gonna do this until about June, and then you might wanna switch over to the flower and bloom. You can also just feed one or the other. Either way, your plumeria is gonna be happy. Just regular fertilizing is definitely gonna push them to bloom much, much better. Okay, thank you. We have another question here from Maggie McGuivar from on Facebook asking, how do you pick where to cut for getting a clipping to grow? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so um, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this yeah. in this? Okay, uh, sorry, live. Maybe a little bit, okay. Yeah. Now you can see it all <laughs> that. So um, here at the joint would be a great place um, because you're going to get some growth there. If you cut it right here, this branch here is probably going to die this part right here. This this would be fine, but at a nice break in the plant. It's pretty um, easy. Cut it if you can with a knife, something very, very sharp. Get a good clean cut because it's better for the parent plant and for the baby plant. Um, I know some people just love to yank branches off of plumeria. Try and do it with kindness and with a sharp instrument. <laughs> Great. We have another question on Facebook from Virginia Wong. My question is, why do plumeria flyers only partially open? The plant is several years old and ha looks healthy otherwise. They only partially open. Um, there could be a couple of reasons. Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe um, infrequent watering could be one thing. You really need to keep the plant hydrated from the roots all the way out to the very, very tips. Um, you could also maybe have a pest problem. It could be spider mites or aphids. Plumerias don't usually have a lot of problems, but that um, spider mites, aphids, little things like that, that can affect it. And it's gonna affect the leaves, like right here on the tip, right where all that new growth is, that's where those little um, pests like to be. And something as simple as an insect killing soap is pretty much all you'll need. You might want to spray it on there as it's starting to come out of dormancy just to make sure or, you know, uh, dust it off, hose it off up on the top, make sure that the water isn't sitting there. But, but keeping the plant um, hydrated is going to be good for keeping all those little dusty pests out of there. Great. Another question on Facebook from Lisa Batras. Pardon, pardon if I have botched your name. <laughs> um, don't, get any, don't get many blooms and sometimes edges are black. What is my friend doing wrong? The edges of the flowers are black or the edges of the leaves are black? If it's the edges of the flowers, again, blooming has a lot to do with sun. And so make sure that it's in full sun, not on your patio. Um, that, that would probably help a lot. Um, if it's, if it's, if it's the, the blooms here are turning black, that could be a sign of like a pest or something like that. Um, that would, you know, um, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but there aren't a lot of things that can go wrong with the plumeria other than too much water or maybe some pests as they're coming out of dormancy. Great. The one thing I want to say just really quickly is that um, people love the smell of plumerias and a lot of them smell differently, but they smell better at nighttime. Um, I love that they're pollinated by a um, sphinx moth at nighttime. So that's why they smell better in the evening. If you try and smell them in the morning, you'll think, oh, it's not as good, but enjoy she was, it. She just responded and said that the black edges are on the flowers. Does black that have edges any on the significance? Gosh, I, you know, I'm not sure. If you like, you can give us a call later or you can send Is us in picture? pictures. Um, we love looking at the pictures and trying to figure out what it might be. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, so call me. God. We have another oh. question on Facebooks, um, and I think you're going to touch on this. Why did you? Why did you say? Uh, what did you say was a good fertilizer for the flowers? If you can repeat that again. Oh sure. And by the way, we're going to have a link to all the fertilizers, yes. all the products that I'm talking to you about. We'll put them up on our website, and um, we'll talk about them on Instagram and Facebook as well. So these these products are Seagro. They're great. They're super easy to use. They come with a little scooper. You just take one little scoop out 
put it into a bucket of water and you can um, feed a ton of plants with it. It's just a once a month thing. Um, I know some plumeria growers are much more um, dedicated to this whole thing and what they'll do is they'll do a really light concoction every week to just instead of once a month they'll do it lightly every every week so that's a um, thing uh, another question we have on Instagram is um, LS Wanader do some <laughs> colors smell and others don't um, some smell a little bit more, but they all have a light fragrance. Again, it's going to be a much better experience in the evening. And so, like a lot of people will come to Rogers here and they'll smell and they'll say, this one doesn't smell very good. But I guarantee if you came around here at 8 or 9 at night, they will smell a lot better. Right, another question? Um, yeah. On Instagram, MX Torres again is asking, I just started 9 to f- 9.58 to 8 fertilizer. How often? Once per week or once per month? Nine dash five eight dash eight. Wow, that's some hardcore fertilizer. Um, I would, as always, I'm going to tell you read the instructions on your uh, fertilizer. It sounds uh, not like an organic fertilizer. The numbers are too high. We like to try and um, promote organic gardening here. So um, definitely check on that. I would not do it once a week. I would probably do it once a month at the most. And um, but if it's a uh, um, you know check check the package. It's always really good to read the instructions. A um, couple questions we got on Instagram and I think both on Facebook is asking about watering. Is it water once a week? How much do they water? Okay, if you're in Southern California, and this is really it's so funny because the person that I'm doing this this live with is Nava, and she sends me <laughs> questions all the time from all over the United States about plumerias, and I think wow, people do have plumerias in places like Nebraska and cold, cold places. So I'm going to talk about Southern California watering. You usually start watering um, end of February, beginning of March, and you're going to water it regularly. So um, if it's in a pot, every every watering technique is different. It just depends on the exposure, the weather, and, and all sorts of things. If you have a terracotta pot versus a glazed pot, you're going to want to just make sure that you water the the area deeply and make sure that you get to the bottom of the roots and then come back probably in a week. If it's really hot, water it more often. Um, But slower, deeper watering less often is always better for all plants. And um, with plumerias, you really don't have to water them when they're dormant. They're perfectly happy to be dormant. If you're living outside of Southern California, you usually take your plant in its container, it's lost all of its leaves, and you just shove it in a cool, dry closet. (laughs) Um, They're perfectly happy. In Southern California, just push them off to the side. They're fine, and you don't really have to water them. If they get some water from the rain, that's fine. Just make sure it's draining out well. Um, Watering is just regularly. So I would say a good, long drink of water once a week would be good can we have another question we have lots of questions actually coming so up. many <laughs> on areas i know <laughs> so we have a question on um, facebook from shamina mukhtar um do you have to put stones around the plant no i think i think she's referring oh, maybe to that that's just an aesthetic thing okay. we think they look pretty and you know kind of looks a little more finished in the pot uh another question on facebook from karen harrison yellow leaves does that mean too much water it can mean that. For, for the most part, if the whole plant is yellow, you probably are watering it too much. So stop for a week or two. Um, if it's just a couple of yellow leaves, like down here, those are older leaves and they're just going to drop off. So, um, Another question on Facebook from Julie Kelmer Patterson. Do plumerias like coffee grounds? Um, they don't really need that acid. Um, they're a pretty neutral soil. They can... They don't need it. It, That's more like a gardenia, um, azalea, hydrangea, plants that really love acidic soil. Uh, Plumerias, they don't. They're just a super tropical, organic-y soil kind of plant. Wonderful. Um, Another question, I think you touched on this, but um, I think we weren't just one, maybe reiterate it for Succulent Care Kit on Instagram. It looks like your plumerias are in the shade. They are. Um, That's only for this live thing right now. They are... um, they are full sun loving plants. Um, they will grow in the shade, but they won't bloom as much. We're just doing this because it's pretty warm here today and it's nice. And um, I would be really, really squinty <laughs> if I um, had full sun on me. Another question on Instagram, Kara's 1972. How long does it take uh, to, 
to flower once a cutting has been potted? Oh, okay. That's a great question too, because that comes up a lot. Once you take a cutting, it can take three or four years maybe. Um, sometimes if you're growing plumerias from seeds, and I didn't really go into that, maybe I'll go into it in a minute, but um, they take a long time. So be patient and just as long as you've got leaves and the plant looks healthy, it's fine, but it can take years before it's ready to go unless you cut it and it's suddenly ready to go right then. Great. Um, on Facebook, Adrian Morgan is asking, how do you weird so just remember to wear gloves and um let the the cuts dry out before um you know you go messing around with anything great um on instagram steffi weffy is asking <laughs> is miracle grow good for plumerias oh gosh from an organic standpoint no <laughs> um or, uh, miracle grow is a synthetic fertilizer and it has a tendency to push plants a little bit harder than they want that being said miracle grow is for blooming plants um i would stick with organics it's a lot easier it's a lot safer you do call us you can call us you can do it online you can do it any way you want you can come into the store and pick it up as long as you've got a mask on and social distancing or you can call from outside and get them to um bring it out to you it's pretty cool we uh, we have an e-commerce page that is amazing it has So it's, it's droopy form straight what it's, do you think if it's droopy it's too much water it's definitely too much water um it could be rotting that could be a big red flag <laughs> i had a plumeria do that once <laughs> i live from experience um it was maybe hold on one second we have a helicopter heli we have a helicopter coming over us they're just but um yeah uh Drooping is probably, and it uh, it may just be have something to do with rot within the actual plant um, somewhere, somehow. So I would take it out of the soil if it's not too big and um, see what's going on with it. Question on Instagram by Sylvia Harrison. What type of soils is best for plumerias? So again. roof i'm sorry use roof concentrate any secrets i've tried several times to plant cuttings neighbors give away but they don't bloom or grow so um cuttings they are they thrive on neglect i swear i promise you plumerias thrive right there in his garden he didn't even put soil on or anything um, they will just grow so cut it let it wait a couple days to heal that cut with that milky sap and then just plant it once it's dry you can go to our online back again if you have questions feel free to send them to our instagram or facebook you can call us here at the store you can email us from our website and um anything else we can help you with we'd be more than happy we have more questions
sprinklers can do it. Um, you don't really want a lot of water hitting the leaves or the plant, but that's uh, pretty much a rule for all plants. Um, um, I love that we're getting an audience here. Oh, we, we have a lot <laughs> you, of people You people can't see this, but there's a lot of people standing yeah. around here now. <laughs> Um, another question from Denise Wire Photography on Instagram. Do they need full sun when dormant in SoCal? Full sun when dormant. They don't need it, but they will go dormant. So it's not a problem. You can leave them right where they are. Um, just know that, that they will go dormant. MX Torres is asking, are some colors more temperamental than others? Um... <laughs> I think some of them, some of the really, really fancy hybrids can be a little bit more delicate, but otherwise, you know, most of the things that we're going to sell here are very, very hardy. Um, okay, we have another question on Facebook asking, what months are they dormant? So again, it has to do more with weather, but usually I would say end of November through March is when they start um, the tips. I think we don't have any really, really young ones here, but... They'll go totally dormant like this, and then you'll see these little teeny leaves coming out. This one's just barely breaking out of dormancy, but um, it's it's um, sometimes it takes a long time for them to come out of dormancy, and sometimes if you've got a warm warm weather trend going, they'll come right out of dormancy. Okay, we have a question from someone at Rogers Gardens. Can oh you explain goodness. the difference between a dwarf and full-size plumerias? Which is a great question. Well, okay, so the dwarfs, we sell some of these these dwarf varieties. They won't get as big. This is true. Um, I feel like they might be a little bit more delicate than the regular uh, plumerias. They stay smaller and they have less flowers. So, um, you know, if you're living in a small area, they're a great, great plant. But if you, if you can, plant the bigger ones, put them in a big old pot. Great. And then another question from on Facebook, Jill Helmer, what, sh what should you mix with the hard clay like dirt to keep it from getting hard like sand? Is it, should you hard question mark sand? Yeah. Well, so then again, this cactus mix, we have larger bags. This is just the easiest one to grab like this, but put cactus mix in with your native. So we all have a lot of clay here and, um, since we have a moment, I'll, I'll go into all of our clay, all of our soil on the top is really, really nice, but underneath we all have a hard pan of hard clay. Depending on how much you want to go through your soil and make it healthier, it's still going to be down there. And that's the thing about a lot of plants, especially a plumeria, it's going to grow big roots and it's going to hit that hard pan. So if we have a lot of rain, stop watering because that hard pan is holding the water for you and for the plants. Um, but if you have this cactus mix, it's going to help keep the water away from the roots, too much water away from the roots. Great. Another question is, what's causing, uh, Linda Johnson Lowry on Facebook is asking, what is the causing the leaves to have ridges? That is probably, it could be two things. It could be not enough sun, but it could also be a pest, um, usually in the development of the leaf, uh, spider mites, aphids, things like that. Um, so that's why you want to use the pesticides um, in the beginning of the season, like a really mild insecticidal soap, or make sure that you're watering and getting that off. Okay, another question is, is, um, is it impossible to stop the rotting from Diane Burnett on Facebook? It's really hard. Um, if you have a big enough piece, you can cut it off. Again, let it dry out and try it again. But um, sometimes it, it's like your circulation. Sometimes it will just break down. Great. Um, another question is from Richard um, Harris on Facebook. Do plumerias grow pot? Grow? I'm sorry. Do plumerias outgrow pots, or do they have to be cramped in pots? Need to repot? Question mark. They don't mind having their roots bound a little bit, but I think the main danger of a plumeria in a pot getting too big is that it will fall over. Um, that. So, you know, that's usually the time that you repot is when it starts tipping over. So as long as your pot is large enough that it won't tip over, it should be fine. And then we have a question on Instagram. Adding stones to soil, would that help the water flow? No. Um, adding stones to a pot is always a bad idea. Um, small pumice and things like that is good. A lot of people put um, stones at the bottom of their pots, and so I'm just going to go on my <laughs> traditional rant of just don't put stones back there because the soil will eventually go through those stones and just kind of clog instead of uh, help your drainage. Great. Another question in Arizona, <laughs> the best plant in a pot to, or ground? 
is it best to plant in pot or ground? Oh, I mean, if you can put it in the ground, sure. Then it'll just get bigger and bigger and you'll be able to enjoy it so much you'll have more blooms. Um, but pots are great too. I mean, they, they do well in either. Second Care Kid is asking, so would you add extra puma, pu pumice, 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 pumice in the soil? <laughs> Um, if you're putting it in the ground and you feel your soil is super, super clay, you can add more pumice, but, um, the, the cactus mix has tons of pumice in it. So it's just an additional cost. Um, Nancy Hayden's asking, do you ever water the evergreens all year? You could, I mean, it depends on where you live, depends on, you know, what's going, if, if you're in a cool weather area I would say cut back a little bit but if you're here in Southern California you could um, you don't see them a lot here but sure great another question does Denise Stanley um, my plumerias are plants that have to produce gosh I don't know um, I see plumerias um, I mean all plants have a lifespan but I don't know how long plumerias are to be honest I would say a long time. I'm going to just do two more questions okay. for you. Um, how, from Jill Grammer Helmer on Facebook, how can I get the plumeria to be more full with more branches? Oh, <laughs> that was a question we had recently yeah. by email. Um, fertilize regularly. You can't really make a plant grow too fast, too quickly without, you know, kind of you have to sacrifice one thing or the other. Either you get growth or you get bloom. So um, just um, be patient. It will grow. If you're fertilizing regularly, it's going to grow better than if you're not. But you don't need uh, to really be super intense with plumeries there. I, I want to just keep emphasizing plumeries are so easy. They are so easy. You don't need to overthink it. You don't need to overwater them. They're just happy as a clam to just be around. And uh, one last question from Nelson Dearborn. Can you graft different color cuttings on a single stock? If so, how? Oh gosh, I do not. Uh, that's very complicated. I don't know, but people do. Then I'm gonna ask one more question then. Plumeria Society. To that one. The if, Plumeria Society will help you with that one. MX Torres, if the pots have two cuttings that have now rooted, would it do damage if we split the two into separate pots? So they were two, two plumeria plants were growing no no it's just like a succulent their their roots aren't that delicate or anything so great yeah so um okay um uh, i'm not sure what you're saying but so uh just go visit our instagram our facebook our for the blog for plumerias and they can get more information oh we do have a blog for plumerias i did not know that but now I do. Um, and so do you. So just uh, go to our website. We have all of the information there. We have our e-commerce. We have uh, links to our Instagram, Facebook. And then don't forget tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Haley's going to be here with her new and trendy indoor plants. That would be super fun to watch. I want to thank you all for coming. <laughs> You need to save this because that's vital. Uh -huh. yeah. and, uh, <laughs>